friction with buyers. We had to determine the mathematical relationship between the degree of banking and the average top speed. We went on NASCAR's website and we searched up the average top speed, the length, and also the degree of banking for each racetrack. Then we compiled it onto a spreadsheet. All right, for this problem, we used a sixth grade standard unit rate, and we also used an eighth grade standard that focuses on scatter plots. We came up with a way to organize our information by using a graph called the scatter plot. And the scatter plot shows all types of information based on the degree of banking and the average top speed. And with the degree of banking and the average top speed, we came up with the line called the line of best fit, which organize, organizes that um, our unit rate would be for every five degrees there will be three miles per hour. This track has a 30 degree bank, and this one has a 10 degree bank. We made these tracks out of cardboard for it to be the base, construction paper to provide friction more than the regular paper, hot glue to hold it together, and we used the protractor to measure the angle. I'm here to talk about the degrees of banking and how we use the protractor. So on this degree was 30 degrees, this degree was 10 degrees, and as you can see, it's 10 degrees, and on this side, it's 30 degrees. On this 30 degree ramp, we realized we had to go higher on the ramp for more speed. To test this track, we had to put the speed on a 30 degree angle up to here for it to go fully across the track. If it was at a 10 degree angle, we have to go lower to a foot off the track. If, if it was a low track, we, will, we, will, we can't go at a high speed because if we turn left, it will go straight off the track. On a low track, we go low speed, and on the high track, we go high speed. All right, based on the data we got from NASCAR, and based on the data that we got from the track, we can conclude that the higher the degree of banking, the higher the top average speed.